when Bart So police officer Brian Dorman is running code, cars just seem to get out of his way faster these days, and the department believes this is the reason. It's called the Howler. I don't know if I could go back to just a regular siren and feel safe with it. Like a big subwoofer, the Howler sends out a low frequency vibration up to 200 feet. You can see flashing lights, you can hear a siren, but the Howler, you feel. In an age of texting, iPods, and cell phone distractions, that can be a valuable tool. It just scared me more than anything. <laughs> well, you can hear it. You can watch out for it. Pay attention. Got a howler here on that howler. William Grover, who works at Bartow's carpool facility, first pitched the idea after feeling the howler himself while visiting relatives in New York. It's like a vibration almost. It wasn't overwhelming, but it was... Just different. The city of Bartow first decided to try out the Howler system with its fire department, and they liked the results. The Howler was co-developed by a Florida Highway Patrol captain, and in its first five years on the market, has been adopted by more than a hundred agencies, including Chicago, Boston, and the NYPD. The Polk County Sheriff's Office went with another system, calling the Howler pricey at $350 a piece. But Bartow police say they've worked out a package deal worth the expense to make sure that we're seen heard and felt um, in order to do our job safely. In Bartow, Eric Lasser, 10 News. Right. Accountability. Judge Tommy Munoz has a passion for keeping students on the right track at a young age. To, to have respect, do your homework, do what you need to do. I tell them in court, I said, the, the schools have rules. You break the rules, you got to come to court. For the adults, what do we have? Laws. We break the law, where do we go to jail? Munoz works with the Bryan School District to help place students on the AIM Truancy Solutions Program. The truancy program also not only serves as a tracking system too, but more of a mentoring system. In other words, they have coaches, mentors that talk to these students. Over 200 schools in Texas use this handheld device that wakes students up for school and constantly monitors where they are during the day. We listen to what's going on in their life and then we start leading them to what is ultimately uh, much more decisions and much better quality of life, but it all starts with education, and education starts with getting to school and getting to school on time. Since the program started in Brazos County, it has improved student attendance by 24 percent. I think it's been a huge success. We've had a lot of students that have written letters, parents saying thank you, notes, thank you very much, Judge. Knox says the GPS device guides students to get on the path of accountability and gives at-risk youth a chance to change their future. They have choices. There is an environment. There's a big, much bigger picture and a much bigger world, and it's their choice. And we just have to help them sometimes get to that situation and find and, and really instill the hope. In Hello, everyone. Welcome back to GGN. This is part three of this news bulletin for today, the last part. And I apologize for the bad video there on this one. I actually tried, I think it was about ten times before I actually started recording to get that to play. So... But either way, um, you know, see, they want to be like the big police states of Boston, Chicago. You heard it, you know, we just want to be like them, right, you know. And, um, and what, what did one officer say? Uh, I don't know if I could go back to a regular siren and feel safe with it, right? He doesn't feel safe with flak jackets and uh, being totally militarized uh, with tasers, a, a computer database in his Batmobile totally linked up to federal agencies and stuff like that uh, all the all the ability the laws all set up cater towards him he doesn't also every town now even small towns that I've been through and lived in and these small towns they have all this equipment hooked up to these t uh, to these little cruisers that they have I mean the towns themselves they have no industry they have no economy right but they have these souped up fucking big ass cars like in the uh, uh, what was it Pine Ridge you know it was a documentary I saw from RT and they had this huge, you know, thing right there. I mentioned this before, an SUV, souped up and everything, while there's, like, homeless people on the side of the road and just, you know, totally dirt poor and stuff like that. But they somehow managed to scrounge up enough tax dollars to fucking fund all this stuff. I mean, we're talking about technology where they can remotely shut off your car. Um, the one town, I remember, a uh, population of, like, 300, it had, the car had a... Uh, 
it had uh, the super mic where they can actually listen in like on you uh, basically you know 50 yards or something like that away and you know this is the thing about these sirens I've already thought about the sirens I don't like the sirens they actually aggravate me when I hear them uh, because you know just the way I think it's like I don't want the state to uh, I, want, I, I just don't want people to be relying on them and then you see these stupid sheeple saying well if you hear it you better get out of the way and that one girl said uh, well it makes me feel scared well that's the whole point of those sirens when you hear the siren and you see uh, the flashes the red and blue you think death you think you get scared really especially now that they're highly digi uh, digitized those lights I mean uh, I've, I'm glad I'm not epileptic because if I was I probably would have you know be more se seizure prone around those damn things I don't like them. You know, my eyes are somewhat sensitive to light, and those things kind of just drive me nuts, basically. And I know what they're there to do. They're there to instill fear, and that's why that lady said she was scared, and that's why they're stimulating all the senses. So now you can, you can hear it, you can see it, and now you can feel it. Just to let you know that you're a slave. And then, of course, you had this one, this Texas judge, uh, saying, you know, basically uh, equating the courts and the laws uh, for the parents as as uh, basically these truancy task force are for the children, right? To bring a better uh, quality of your life, you have to get educated, right? You have to get brainwashed and indoctrinated into this system like those slaves that were like, oh yeah, you better just get out of the way. This is a great little tool, you know? I mean, I guess people, if they wanted to, they could try to just homeschool their children or something and avoid all this. Um, but you know i'll show you this article because there was another one up too a story about it judge sends honor student to jail for missing school i believe it was the parents that were arrested uh for their student right here this was just recently from the 24th mother gets jail time for allowing her kids to skip school and uh and then they have this article right here i'm gonna close that out it says here, Houston area a teenager has been jailed and fined for missing school by a judge who hopes to make an example of her. 17-year-old is working with two jobs while taking advanced placement and dual credit courses at William High School. So she, she kind of believes in this, right? That's what I think. I think she kind of just believes in this whole uh, this whole thing, you know, working two jobs, uh, taking dual credit courses. She's probably planning on going to college and, and, and being a good member of, a productive member of this uh, slave society. But that wasn't good enough, right? You have to get your indoctrination too. So it goes on here and it says that some mornings she is simply too exhausted to make it to school on time. Some days she misses classes altogether. So the judge uh, justified this by saying, if you let one of them loose, let one of them uh, run loose, uh, what are you gonna do with the rest of them? Let them go too? So. So it says here that her parents actually divorced out of the blue last year, both moved away, leaving the high schooler on her own in Willis. So she's working part-time at a wedding venue and full-time at a dry cleaning business just to stay afloat. This is a follow-up story to this. This is actually from December of last year. Florida County will throw parents of truant kids in jail. New truancy court in Palm Beach, Florida aims to cut down on the state's absentee rate for young children by punishing parents who don't take their kids to school. And uh, then we have this right here. Uh, Mayor's Interagency Task Force on Truancy. So remember I covered this before about Texas having a truancy task force. And, uh, you know, this is uh, this is by design, guys. I mean, they're, the whole thing about having just a, a two-member family, or a one-member family, I mean, that was all by design. The, the main thing is to get the father out of the house, get the mother so that she has to go to work all the time. Then she has to dump the kids off at the re-education camp so they get brainwashed right for eight hours and then they do their extracurricular activities around their ipods they don't even have to have a relationship or even know their parents but this is everywhere you know this is new york city this is in oakland all the way across the country this is in texas all the way across the country this page is no longer available then uh, you have students will be tracked via chips and ids this is recently from may 26 so it says here the school plans to track students next year on two of its campuses using technology implanted in their student identification cards in a tr which will be mandatory right so so this is the thing everybody's accepting like that horn in the beginning that's shooting out uh low frequency waves right you know these people are going to have these radio frequency they're going to be required to have these identification cards they're going to be shooting out these radio frequencies and they, you know what i'm saying 
Nobody ever, nobody ever thinks about that, dude. They never take that in consideration, like a tower that they just put up recently near my house. Before I had a tower that was just blinking the red light, kind of like a boom, 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 you know? And now they switched it all of a sudden, recently in the past two weeks, to a white light. And I noticed that those ones, they tend to be a little more intense, dude. They'd be like, boom, 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 boom. And I live kind of out here in a stick, so this is a big deal. And I noticed afterwards, uh, that, you know, I was starting to feel the effects on my body recently, little, little ailments flaring up. And then I noticed that that tower, that a new tower is put up afterwards. So, and then I noticed around, just around my area, people are getting violent. You know, I've had, there's been people thrown out next door, uh, people across the way getting into it over like a dog or something like that. But I, I can assure you that these telecom companies, they don't give a shit about your health and they have no consideration whatsoever uh, for the people that are going to be having to experience uh, these radio frequencies pulsing through their body and through their heads, you know, uh, because they subject their own workers to it. They go to these towers, right? They have a little remote and stuff and they can turn them off so they don't get such a high dose of it. You know, so if they'll use their own workers as little guinea pigs, they're definitely going to use uh, the masses. It says here, face reading software to judge mood of the masses. So speaking of the masses, May 28th, 2012, systems that can identify emotions and images of faces might soon uh, collate millions of people's reactions to events and could replace opinion polls. So this is going to be based for what? For advertising probably is how they're going to sell it. Um, but it goes on here and it says... So it actually, they're using it more for polling for elections, uh, not so much advertising as I thought it would. But it says here that it can uh, gauge people's reactions even as they sit watching it at home. She even went on and said that uh, they can use it on the streets and they tested it in an experiment on a college campus to gauge the general mood, as it says. But this one individual worries that the technology might have a dark side. My fear is that some of these dictators, <laughs> like Obama, would want to blow away the village that doesn't like them, she says. So we're talking about face reading, you know. Well, I found this article, Miami police shoot kill man eating another man's face. Surveillance video shows apparent shooting nude men on the ground. So, and this was in Miami, Florida. So the Fraternal Order of Police says drugs are at the root of the attacks. So I'm not sure if it's actually bath salts, you know, the salt they put in your baths, or it's a new type of LSD, but it says this new LSD is commonly called bath salt. So, so it says here that it can raise a body temperature, temperature to such a high degree that logic and ability to feel pain are lost, and delirium sets in. So they blame it on the purely on the drugs. I think there's something messed up with our society right now but uh either way it goes down here and the cops threaten people saying if you're selling lsd to people you'll be charged so you might want to start off with the cia and that because they're the ones that originally created this stuff they're probably the ones that created this new type so miami florida now remember this article female vampire busted in bloody biting attack and where florida yeah he chomped an old man's face saying i'm a vampire remember this texas teen held after a vampire attack then we have this, thousands take part in slut walks in Brazil, so they uh, dressed up like a bunch of whores and staged boisterous slut walks in several Brazilian cities to protest sexual violence against women. It says it's a call to end physical, sexual, and psychological violence against women. So how about the psychological violence that's carried out against men? Some of them were calling for the decriminalization of abortion. They included representatives of various feminist, lesbian, and transgender groups where now Brazil, it's actually a legal right to have a sex change. The first walk was held in Toronto last year after a police officer caused outrage by stating that women should avoid dressing like sluts in order to not be victimized. And then in the U.S., House passes Violence Against Women Act, so, you know, they can have counseling and stuff and say, well, you, as you dressed up like a hoochie, inviting stuff like that, you're not responsible, you know? You got pregnant and you have an abortion, you're not responsible for that. We have counseling for you. And remember this story about the male birth control, which explodes sperm, male pill, gene discovery may lead to a contraceptive for men, then dozens held at the Russian Orthodox Church activists attack gay rights rallies. So if you remember earlier this year, Russia introduced a bill that would impose fines for spreading gay propaganda among minors. 